Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on proportions. Our objectives today are that you will solve proportions using multiplication and that you will solve proportions using the cross product property. So I'm going to show you two different ways to solve a proportion. Here's what I want you thinking about today. How can you use what you know about solving equations to solve a proportion? A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal. So a proportion is an equation stating equality. Equivalent ratios are two ratios that form a proportion. So if we have a ratio A to B and a ratio C to D, and they're equivalent, then they can make up what we call a proportion, a ratio equal to a ratio. Here's numbers. We have a ratio of 1 to 3 and a ratio of 2 to 6. These are equivalent ratios. 1 to 3 is equal to 2 to 6, so we say that they are forming a proportion because if I simplify 2 sixths, it simplifies to 1 third, and there we have equality. Now we can talk about a proportional relationship. A proportional relationship exists when two quantities compared as ratios are equal. So if two ratios are equal to each other, they form a proportion, and we can say that they're in a proportional relationship. This becomes very important as we move through algebra. If two ratios are equal, then they can form a proportion and they have a proportional relationship. So let's look at a real world problem. On Monday, your school lunch had one apple and three cookies. On Tuesday, your school lunch has two apples and six cookies. And we're asked, is this a proportional relationship? So how we would determine that is we'd make the ratios. So on Monday, our ratio is one apple to three cookies. On Tuesday, our ratio is two apples to six cookies. So we look to see if they're equal, and we're asking ourselves that question. Since we know that one times two is two, and three times two is six, then we know that it checks they are proportional. So yes, this is a proportional relationship, since the ratios are equivalent and they form a proportion. So the other way you could know is we could just simplify one of the ratios. Now let's learn how to solve a proportion using multiplication. So we're given this proportion and we have an unknown value. So we know that there's a statement of equality here. It's saying that this ratio is equal to this ratio, forming a proportion. So now we're asked to solve for the value of x that will make this ratio equivalent to this ratio. So we know that x is being divided by 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. The inverse of divide is to multiply. If I multiply the left side of the equation, I must multiply the right side by the same value. 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.25 is x because this is 1. So over here, 25 hundredths simplifies to 1 fourth. 1 fourth of 6 is 1.5, and 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. Now, I don't know about your teacher, but I allow my students to use a calculator in this because it's more important that you understand how to solve the proportion and the understanding of a proportional relationship. We've already practiced using uh, multiplication and division with rational numbers in previous lessons. So hopefully you're allowed to use a calculator as well. So now let's look at how to solve a proportion using cross product property. This is a second method to solve a proportion. The cross product property states that the cross products of a proportion are equal. So we have the same proportion here and I'm going to show you how to use cross product property. So it means just that we're going to form a cross. So we're going to go across diagonally, and we're going to multiply 1.5 times x, and then we're going to go across the other way and do 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths times 6, and make them equal to each other. So 1.5 times x equals 25 hundredths times 6. Multiply 1 fourth of 6 
is 1.5. Divide both sides by 1.5 and x is equal to 1. So you can see I think cross product property is simpler but some people like to use the multiplication method. Now let's you put this to work. We are asked if these ratios are proportional and we're going to determine whether or not they form a proportion. So we put them together with an equal sign and we question it. Are they equal? So I'm going to use the cross product property to check. If they are proportional or form a proportion, then the multiplication across needs to be equal to each other. So 6 times 3 needs to be equal to 8 times 4. 6 times 3 is 18 and 8 times 4 is 32. These are not proportional. They are not equivalent ratios and they are not in a proportional relationship since their cross products are not equal. Now it's your turn. I would like you to determine whether the ratios form a proportion. Please pause the video now and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So we're asking ourselves is 6 over 14 equal to 3 over 7? So I'm going to use the cross product property. You could have used multiplication. 6 times 7 is got to be equal to 14 times 3. So again, we're making this cross. 6 times 7 is 42. 14 times 3 is also 42. It checks. So yes, the ratios form a proportion since their cross products are equal. Now let's look at solving the proportion. So we have 3 over 8 is equivalent to x over 24. So a proportion is an equation. We have an unknown x. To solve this, I'm going to use cross product. 8 times x is 8x, or 8 times x. Then we get to do the other cross, 3 times 24. So these are equal to each other because we're given the proportion. So 8x is equal to 3 times 24, which is 72. To undo, multiply by 8, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 8, applying what we know about solving an equation. 8 divided by 8 is 1, giving me x, and 72 divided by 8 is 9. So to make this uh, equivalent ratios, x would need to be 9. Your turn. I would like you to solve the proportion. Use either method that we've learned. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So I'm going to use cross product property. Actually, no, let's, let's use multiplication this time. So I am going to, the inverse of divide by 5 is to multiply by 5. So if I multiply the left by 5, I must multiply the right by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, leaving me x. Over here, I'm going to do the math. 5 divided by 40 is 1 over 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So you could do this on your calculator. So on a calculator, I would do 16 times 5 and then divide by 40. Or you could 16 divide by 40 and multiply by 5. Any way you look at it, the answer is 2. All right, your turn again. I would like you to solve the proportion and come back and hit play when you're done. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and solve. I'm going to use cross product property this time. I'm going to multiply across, so x times 4, or 4 times x, remember, multiplication is commutative, and then my other cross, 22 times 7, 4x is equal to 154. The inverse of multiply by 4 is to divide by 4, what I do to one side, I do to the other, so x is equal to 38.5. Now let's see how useful cross product can be with a ratio table. So we're asked to complete this table. Well, if we're giving that it's a ratio table, then we know each one of these is going to be an equivalent ratio. If they're equivalent ratios, we know that cross product property needs to work. So across, if this is 3 times 2, that is 6. That means going this way, the product also needs to be 6. So 6 times 1 is 6. All right, let's erase this cross product. Now we're going to go over here. So 2 times 9 is 18. So 6 times the missing value also needs to be 18. 6 times 3 is 18. 
Let's erase our cross and we're going to do it one more time. So we're looking for this value. So 3 times 18 is going to be 54. 9 times what is 54? 6. So there we have it. Our ratio table is all filled out. So you can use cross product property to complete a ratio table. Your turn. I would like to pause you to pause the video here, complete the ratio table, and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. All right, let's use our cross product property. So 9 times 5 is 45. 1 times 45 is 45. Our next one, 9 times 50 is 450. 45 times 10 is 450. Next cross product, 50 times 8 is 400. 10 times 40 is 400. There you have it. So that is a proportion and how we can make a proportion out of equivalent ratios and determine a proportional relationship and two methods to solve a proportion, cross product property and solving using multiplication. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.